Hello everyone and welcome to Modeling the Chang'e 5 Lunar Sample Return Mission in Blender. I recently did a video on this mission and I had modeled the mission during a live stream on Twitch. Uh, it was about three hours and that's the video that you see here. This doesn't cover the texturing or bringing it into Unity and into Kerbal Space Program. This is just the basic modeling of it. Uh, and here you see the first thing I did was size my reference image. It wasn't a very good reference image because it's not orthographic, it's not flat, and so it's a bit distorted, but it was the best I could find that, that could show all the components. I had other references uh, on a different monitor. But here you can see that I'm blocking out each part. I had sized the reference image based on human figures that were standing next to the descent stage. And so I started off with that and tried to get the reference image to about the right size uh, based on what I thought would be the right size. I don't have any dimensions on any of these things. And ultimately I'll increase the size of the orbital stage, which is at the bottom there. So here I am uh, making the little capsule, which is the first thing that I add detail to, but otherwise it's just basically sizing cubes and cylinders so far. And this is obviously sped up by a factor of four. Uh, you can see at the bottom right of the main window the keys that I'm pressing. And so if you want to follow something or check something out, if you want to slow down the video, remember there is a function in you on YouTube for that. So here we go. I just sort of tapered in the top and here's the heat shield portion. Uh, at this point, I just decide to add that to the capsule itself. And there we go. I make a little aperture for the sample uh, if we wanted to have something plopped in there. But ultimately, I didn't decide to do anything with that. But it showed sort of an aperture on the image. So I went with that. Here's some detailing on this um, inner stage. I guess we'll call it an inner stage between the orbital stage and the descent stage. Uh, so trying to make it look like that. Of course, the dual flow will come on, on the texturing. I take a look at how the descent stage is. Uh, the edges are actually, it's octagonal, except only slightly octagonal, if you will, not perfectly octagonal. So I'm trying to do that with subdivision here. And so the subdivision modifier and adding some edge loops, lots of adding edge loops all over the place. That is uh, the number one thing I do. Uh, though you won't see the shortcut for that because I usually just go ahead and press the icon to the left for the edge loops for some reason. That's how I do it. I don't know why, but uh, obviously learning all the keyboard shortcuts will help you do things fairly quickly. And that's a big part of being able to do things quickly in Blender. So I probably should use the keyboard shortcut. Anyway, uh, so there I made the edge loops to make it look what I thought was about right. And adjusting those like so. And then we need to put the aperture for the engine. There's basically one engine on each stage, one core engine, and then a whole lot of RCS thrusters. I decided I want to apply the subdivision surface before creating the gap where the engine fits in because uh, otherwise we would have to create a whole lot of extra edge loops that I didn't want to do. So I just wanted to keep it simple right around there. And so that's how I did it. And next at the tanks, uh, initially, I thought the tanks were slightly poking out the bottom, but it turns out they weren't. I fixed that later, but initially I have them poking out the bottom. And having the tanks in also helps us to estimate the volume of the propellant in the stage. So even if they aren't visible, it's good to sort of see where they might fit in. They're generally spherical on stages that are going to the moon and stuff like that. Uh, sometimes they'll be pill shaped, but they're fairly simple shapes that you can do. And here is the main engine. I don't do much detail on the engines because I didn't see much detail on the engines. And they're fairly simple uh, thrusters, I assume. I'm guessing that they're pressure fed. And so they're not going to have a, a turbo pump assembly and all that business. They're mainly a chamber and a nozzle. So that's what I put. And... So there we go, adjusting the gap there, making sure that doesn't clip into the tanks. Uh, it wasn't anywhere near that, but just in case. And then making the engine hollow. And I do that by uh, insetting and extruding inward because the solidify creates too many polygons. And I also make a little edge uh, thing uh, 
brace, I guess. I don't know. They have those things on the edges of nozzles sometimes, and it's a simple detail to add. Then I copy the engine for the upper portion, the ascent stage, and also copy the the tanks and clip those in. Those do a sort of hang out of the descent stage, so we have it like that. And of course, everything is resized. S for sizing, very simple. I decide to duplicate the stage itself as well and delete the cube that I placed there before, but making this uh, duplicate the same size as the initial cube that I had blocked out. And then I separate off these panels because that's where the sole panels are and they're going to be a different material. So I just make them a different mesh to simplify that aspect of it in Substance Painter. Um, it's nice to have different uh, things with different materials be different meshes for Substance Painter. And this is the solar panel on the descent stage. And this we'll have to animate. So this will be the one animation I'll go through and uh, we'll be doing. So I make the initial panel, trying to estimate the size there. And it's important before animating stuff that you're very clear about everything you do. So one thing that's important is knowing where you want the center of the object to be. And sometimes you'll need a 3D cursor's help to replace the center. In this case, we're just going to parent it to a hinge. And that's the simplest way to get them to rotate properly. So we've done some duplication. There's a notch at the edge of the outer panel. And so I duplicate that here. Decide that the edge actually needs to be a little bit bigger. So I sort of tilt it like that. A little bit awkward, but fine for now. And then we have to rename things to make sure everything is organized. We've got all these meshes in the hierarchy. And it's good to not have them all named cube and cylinder. So this is now the hinge that I'm making. So we need a thin tube. And then we move it uh, at the junction between the two panels, like that. And then I wanted to add some detailing on that hinge. Uh, some very minor detailing, just sort of ribs. And actually, a uh, viewer helped with this because I wanted to uh, extrude inward the detailing. And, but I, I, I sort of manually created those loops, but that was awkward because they weren't spaced the same. You see, they're different, uh, different widths. So uh, somebody told me to use Control B would uh, make it all even. If I selected the initial edge loops, Control B would allow me to get a offset of those. And so I made those offsets and inwardly extruded. And so we have the detailing that I wanted, and I duplicate the hinge to the bottom. And now it's all parenting after this. Again, uh, making sure everything is named properly. But we're going to parent the outer panels to the hinge between the two panels, and then the inner panel to the hinge between itself and the body. And then because the hinge has the right rotation center, the center of rotation that I want, I don't have to worry about the pivot point on the panels themselves, which will not be in the right place. Okay, so all the parenting is happening for both sides. Uh, also, because I mirrored stuff, I had to separate off the mirrored ones because they need to be their own I, thing uh, for the animation. They're going to be rotating basically in the opposite direction. So they are all independent. And after all of that is done, we can animate it, which is fairly simple once you have the hinges. So here I've expanded the animation window, and we want rotation, and that's what we're going to be keying. So I set the first key to the way they are at the beginning, uh, which is up, and then I rotate the hinges. As you can see, I'm getting the hinge rotations in, and then I set that key. And there we go. That's it. That's animating the solar panels. <laughs> uh, that's easier than the legs. The legs actually are what caused me to decide to stop modeling during the stream. Uh, so I don't get down to animating the legs in this video. But uh, I did that off stream and so I don't have the video of that. Yeah, uh, ultimately I ended up being too tired at that point to 
figure that out exactly the way I wanted it. So here are the RCS blocks at the bottom of the descent stage. And so I'm adding a subdivision surface because I decided it was okay. It's uh, sort of a judgment call whether you want to use the subdivision surface or not because it adds a lot of polygons, but um, sometimes it's okay. In the case of the RCS block, it's more that it's very commonly done in Kerbal Space Program than I think it's a good idea because we're going to have a lot of these blocks. They're all going to have this subdivision surface and at least it's not the most complicated mesh to begin with. So here I'm making the thruster as well. And I wanted to change the dimension of that RCS block to allow for the thruster to be a bit bigger because I felt that it was too small the way it was. And so here we are. We're going to add some edge loops once I get the size about where I want it. Uh, just to see that it has the clearance. So here are all the edge loops to size the upper part of the chamber and then the nozzle. And we can alt uh, click the edge segments to get the entire loop, of course. And so just getting it the size that I want it. It's a little bit tall, so ultimately I select everything and then S and Z to squish it down. Now, obviously, this is not some sort of beginner explanation of how to do all this. This is just how I did it, and I'm trying to explain it as quickly as I can. But uh, I have done other Blender videos, so you can take a look at those. But in general, I'm not a, I'm not even intermediate at Blender. There's a lot to learn. So this is, I'm sure a lot of people could give me pointers as far as what I'm doing wrong here. But uh, this is just how I did it. So. People ask me how I make these things, so since I had the video, I decided to produce it for you. So again, uh, just duplicating what I did on the descent stage. I'm pretty lazy about things, so I, I'm not uh, trying to make everything look exactly exactly right. I just wanted to be functionally the same as the as the actual mission. But you can see there's all all sorts of stuff going on, wires and and stuff poking out. Some of it I can't see very distinctly. It's covered up. That You saw all those red brackets. Those are covering up the thrusters and stu such. So I'm trying my best, but to some extent I'm taking a poetic license approach to this. As long as it generally looks about right, I'm, I'm okay. I wanted to have the right functionality. But here I decide that the stage needs to be a little bit taller, partly based on the photo. And also based on the realization that the tanks do not poke out. But since we have this volume, we want to make as much use of the volume with fuel tanks as possible. Otherwise, why did they make it that size, right? Uh, they made it that size because the tanks were a certain size. So anyway, that's my logic. I need to make thruster blocks for the upper portion because it needs to be able to control roll. The lower ones can't control roll for you. They can control yaw and pitch. Uh, but not roll. So upper blocks for that and we need to shape it a little bit differently so that its thrusters are placed more appropriately. So I'm trying to do that, make it like that so that they're at 45 degree angles, which is what they seem to be on the actual thing. And we need to, uh, I copy the thruster and rotate it and position it like that. So that's good. Lots of mirroring going on and duplication, shift D, and placing it. You can just um, switch the X and Y coordinates for uh, positioning it. If it's a duplicate of something else that needs to be at a 90 degree angle. And uh, positioning the blocks on the ascent stage. Now here I miss the fact that the ascent stage needs some extra thrusters to be able to dock. Uh, the descent stage does not need those thrusters, but I end up putting the identical thruster arrangement, but that's not sufficient for the ascent stage. Assuming it's the one that does the docking. Either it has to have certain uh, backward facing thrusters or the orbital stage has to if it does the maneuvering for docking. Anyway, so just adjusting those a little bit better. And then we move on to renaming stuff again and organizing things. Uh, what I wanted to do was make sure that all the parts went together with whatever they're stuck on. The exception is the solar panels because they're already animated. If I wanted to parent them to the descent stage, I should have done that before animating them. Uh, technically, 
I didn't animate their location, I only animated their rotation, so it might have been all right. If you animate the location, uh, switching, uh, creating a new parent for an object is generally a bad idea. So here I'm checking the fit of the capsule and the engine on the descent stage to make sure that things fit all right. There is a pit in the orbital stage that the capsule fits into. You can see that on the image, so I uh, duplicate that. So again, I, what I wanted was if all the stuff on the ascent stage should be uh, a child of the ascent stage main tank or main body, and same for descent and orbital stages, so that uh, we can right click on those parent objects and select hierarchy uh, so that uh, when I want to save them as an object to export them, they can be exported all together without me having to shift click every single one. So that's the, one of the main things about having them be children of the same parent if they're part of the same eventual part that I want to export. So uh, doing very similar things on the orbital stage as we already did with the descent stage and ascent stage. Uh, I just duplicated the engine on the descent stage since uh, the engine on the ascent stage, uh, on the orbital stage, did not seem a different size. And now we are creating the struts that represent the decoupler between the ascent stage and descent stage. And so this, well, it's uh, very simple. And I sort of modeled them after the struts in Kerbal Space Program already. So that's why I make this sort of block and then add a subdivision surface and then the edge loops basically as if we had two struts here back to back and their endpoints overlapped and I get the that top portion and put it at the bottom so very strutty make sure that the stuff isn't poking out there you can see we've got a little bit of a poke out but I adjust that and so here I put the bottom points but roughly speaking it looks very similar to what they actually had I saw some things where these struts actually went with the ascent stage, but other things where they don't, and it didn't make sense to me that this decoupler should remain attached to the ascent stage, so I assume it didn't when uh, configuring it for Kerbal Space Program. And now here I'm going to combine uh, these elements, the little cubes and the main struts, into single parts, apply the location, so that location goes back to origin and then do shift D to duplicate and then just rotate by 90 degrees to make the other set. I do that occasionally when I don't think I need to mess with the parts anymore and I can just duplicate. So sometimes with the RCS thrusters I do that too. And here this is the docking mechanism at the top of the orbital module that ultimately docks with the ascent module and it's sort of a platform on top of the capsule that obviously has to have a gap so that the sample can be dropped into the capsule, but otherwise it has some sort of grapple that is going to grab onto the ascent module. I only really saw the grapple later on when I saw the video of the docking happening. They've posted that. So until then, I didn't really... It's, it's actually sort of like the claw in Kerbal Space Program, what it actually looks like. But here I had to imagine what it looked like at the top and in the image I saw sort of hook like things so I went with that and so ultimately I create little hooks at the top of this um, docking platform and here I'm making the base of the hooks I swear I, I'm using more subdivision surface than I normally do here but it's okay, I'm sure. There's not that much geometry in this model. So after creating the base of the hooks, I get a new cube and I make the hook itself, which is just just from my imagination. Uh, so I messed around with it a little bit. I, you can see I reconsidered the shape there and do it a little bit differently. But yeah, uh, this was just sort of a matter of imagination, but I figured it was reasonable, you know, hooks to latch onto something. They would be, they would bend outward initially and then grab on, but uh, it's 
perhaps too precise. It's better to have the grapple that they eventually did, which is more macro, if you will, uh, larger scale than these sorts of hooks that'll have to uh, require it to maneuver pretty precisely in order to make the docking happen. So, yeah, uh, they definitely had a better idea. But anyway, so positioning the hooks, and I want to do this fairly carefully so that on the opposite side, at the top of the ascent stage, we'll have the eyes, the um, gaps where the hooks hook into. So I want to make sure that those match fairly well, and eventually we're going to have the docking node at about the, the level of these hooks and eyes. So this is the eye that it's going to hook into that will be placed on the ascent module. And you can see me getting a sense of where it needs to be uh, laterally. Of course, we're going to move it straight up when we put on the ascent module like that. So now we've moved it straight up. We've got some mirroring, mirroring and it'll be in the right position for when the hooks get to it. I want sort of stands for these eyes to sit on. So I create a new cylinder for that. The eyes themselves were toruses. And so it's just making it fairly simple. This is not a very complicated docking port, obviously. It could be fancier. And once again, I apply the location and just rotate by 90 degrees. So, yep, then the hooks and the eyes will be matching. And I apply some of the modifiers and group things together because I don't need that many meshes hanging out. It could be a good idea before doing that to UV unwrap the meshes first before uh, applying the mirror symmetry, but I didn't do that in this case. That saves some of the space in the texture files. So I duplicate the RCS blocks from the descent stage and bring it down to the orbital stage. They're not placed quite the same as the blocks on the descent stage, so we have to rotate them a bit, but it's not a big deal. And again, I'm just making use of the fact that I already made those thrusters. Hopefully people don't take too close a look at RCS thrusters and decide whether I got those right. Uh, again, taking liberties here. So ultimately this orbital stage I make larger because in other images I realized that it looks larger. So I just resize the thing and re reposition things that I do off stream. It's obviously too small in this case. Anyway, repositioning the capsule, making sure things still fit. And... Yeah, I actually, even at this point, I'm thinking about the size of that fairing and the orbital module, but I decided to tackle that later. I noticed that there are two tanks on the side of the descent stage, so I make those quickly with these cylinders. They, uh, they might be pressurization tanks or something. I'm not entirely clear what they are. All I know is they were longish pill-shaped objects on the side of it, and that usually signals a tank. Don't know what else we could call them. They don't like look like scientific instruments. They could be drills. Could be drills. I did not do the drill because I was planning to use the stock drill to drill for ore anyway and just wanted to resize that. And I didn't do the arm because functionally in Kerbal Space Program the arm has no function. Actually Looking on the image, I don't think these pill-shaped ones is that... Because the, the drill is pretty long. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I, I was looking at a whole bunch, like a dozen different images, so it just seemed like that needed to be there, and I put it there. But yeah, so there are things that I didn't decide to model because they're not functionally necessary in Kerbal Space Program. Here I'm working on the leg. You can see there's the hinge for the leg. Um, and so it'll rotate at this point, uh, at the center of that cylinder that I initially placed, and I extrude it, but the center remains in the same place, so the rotation will be fine. And then there's the lower part of the leg, which is thicker than the upper part. That's how the images have it. Uh, it's a very, th very thin upper portion in the images. And I'm making sure its rotation is the same as the upper part. And as long as we rotate it like this, we can just translate it up in the animation. We can just slide it up 
the that way. You can see the way its local axes are oriented. It's easy to slide it up and down the upper portion of the leg as long as it's aligned with it. So I make sure you can see as we extended that, it doesn't seem quite aligned with it. So I adjust its rotation so that we can do that with it. And then I inset and extrude inward to make it look more properly like, like a piston. And then I extrude this side and start making the foot. The foot is not going to be a separate mesh. It's just going to be part of this and go along with it because I, I didn't think it needed to tilt up or down. It didn't need to sort of separately animate. So I just need to get this right to extrude a little bit to make the bottom of it. And usually they have a rounded bottom like that. So I'm trying to mimic that a little bit, just moving those edge loops around, adding more edge loops to make, give it a smoother kind of contour. But uh, the shading indicated that I didn't quite do that right. So I'm trying to adjust that a little bit there, add more edge loops to see if that fixes the shading, mess with the edge split, which I still use, even though somebody said that actually there's a better way of doing that, but I, I'm so used to edge split. And well, I was satisfied that that was all right now. And so I, I'm shifting it the way it, has, it is in the image. It's actually shifted offset a little bit outward. So I do that. And you can see the center is still at that upper point. I'm pointing that out because we're going to, in the animation, slide it up like that and then have that hinge pivot at that point. So the upper portion will do the rotation and then we'll adjust the location on the bottom portion. The tricky part is actually the two side braces uh, attaching to the leg because their animation is more awkward. <laughs> it's a, a little bit more involved and positioning it right is important too. So here I am getting those braces into place and they have, they're thicker on the upper portion and thinner on the lower portion. And again, edge split and all that business. I didn't create a complex hinge attaching to the body. I just left it as a cube there, bit lazy, but that's uh, getting its angle right, making sure that this attaches. But ultimately, working on the legs is what uh, decide, made me decide that I was too tired to proceed with this during the stream. Yeah, I lasted about three hours. This is the first time I did an extensive modeling during a live stream, so you'll have to forgive me. But it did end up giving me this video to present to you on YouTube. So there is a positive. And so this is basically how I did that modeling. And we can see the inward extrusion there. I copy that uh, po polygon in the back to make the bottom portion of the strut. And eventually I'll adjust its angle to the leg so that it'll look like it attaches to the leg properly. The key thing and the thing that killed me is when we eventually separate the strut on the opposite side, because I've done mirroring here, right? Uh, on the opposite side, when I separate that one off so that it can be animated separately, it uh, it isn't at the right angle, the bottom part. You know, it's not, the one on the left is at the right angle and can slide in perfectly, but the one on the right, uh, after I adjust it like this and apply the mirroring, its angle is off because I I had a brain freeze and didn't think about that properly. And so... That's what made me quit because these animations have to be done. You have to be careful about how you set them up. And so ultimately I just made another cylinder right there, but yeah, anyway, it was a good run. So you can see it's a little bit off. Uh, that one's aligned, this one is not. And so if we try and slide that one on the right up, it's not gonna work right. Anyway, so I don't know if this has been useful to anyone, anybody or not, but this is basically how I go about things when I'm making these Kerbal Space Program parts. And texturing and bringing it to Unity is a whole other business. But on the whole, once you get the flow of Blender right, it doesn't take too long to cook these, as you can see. And, well, hopefully it's encouraging to other people who want to try and make these models. So, 
With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.